I'm in San Antonio for Nary to Readwise, our 2019 Law, Accounting, and Finance Conference. Joining me today is Jim Hanks, partner with Venable. Jim, thanks so much for joining us again. Good to be here, Matt. Now, Jim, the 2019 proxy season is now underway, and bylaws seem to still be a big issue for REITs formed in Maryland. What is the status of that, and what are you advising your clients? Well, the majority of Maryland REITs, uh, with this issue of exclusive uh, board control of the bylaws, have taken no action at all. Uh, and of the group that have taken some action, uh, many have uh, taken uh, action to permit shareholders to amend the bylaws with ownership requirements, both as to percentage of ownership and as to time, that are greater, in some cases much greater, than what ISS has said uh, that it would approve. So uh, our advice to clients uh, is uh, be prepared to talk about the issue, uh, know your situation, know these facts and others, um, but uh, we think that ISS has been so unsuccessful, at least thus far, uh, in uh, getting its policy adopted uh, and enforcing it uh, with its uh, withhold votes that there's no point in raising it. And that's an important point because what we see major holders doing is saying, we're going to look at individual directors and trustees and decide on a person by person basis whether we're going to vote for them on the basis of things like how is the company performing? What is the company's strategy? Do we believe in it? What's the quality of management? What's the product uh, um, base uh, that they've got? Uh, those are the sorts of things that major holders ought to be looking at and they are. And what are you advising your clients regarding diversity on their board of directors? Well, we think diversity is very important. Uh, we think the most important type of diversity is diversity of perspectives. And there's no question that in many situations, uh, women uh, directors can bring a perspective that would not otherwise be present in the boardroom. Same with minority candidates. But what's really important is the diversity of perspectives, whoever brings them to the board. And finally, a large number of REITs choose to incorporate under Maryland law. Since we last spoke, has there been any changes to the law that REITs should be aware of? Uh, this year, uh, we're eliminating the need for articles of transfer. Uh, we are um, enacting, going to be enacting a blockchain uh, enabling bill. Uh, which we uh, have spent a lot of time with, uh, both internally drafting at our State Bar Corporate Laws Committee level uh, and with the legislature. Uh, but the big issues um, that are benefits to uh, REITs from being formed in Maryland um, include no franchise tax, uh, which can ramp up to as much as $250,000 a year uh, for a public company in Delaware, uh, we have a particularly useful uh, provision uh, for amending uh, the share ownership and transfer provisions uh, that every REIT has in its charter that are binding on all holders, not just holders who vote for them. And we have uh, several other uh, provisions that are unique to Maryland. Uh, for example, we um, uh, permit the charter of a Maryland corporation or a Maryland Title VIII REIT to include a provision that gives the board the power to increase or decrease the number of authorized shares. An enormously uh, useful provision that many REITs in Maryland uh, have taken advantage of. Uh, no other state, to my knowledge, has that. Uh, we permit the board to reverse split the stock uh, without a stockholder vote, but by board action alone. Another provision we have is that you can eliminate uh, appraisal rights uh, in your charter if you uh, choose to do so. Uh, so all those provisions have been enormously helpful. We also have very strong uh, uh, director and officer uh, liability exculpation provisions and indemnification provisions far broader than Delaware. For one reason, we uh, include officers, uh, which Delaware 
uh, does not in its exculpation uh, provisions. We have uh, fewer and narrower exceptions to our exculpation statute uh, than Delaware does. And we also have very uh, strong and protective uh, takeover defense uh, statutes. Uh, the one that's getting the most attention currently is uh, MUTA, Subtitle 8. Uh, and uh, we think that that is a good provision that enables uh, boards to classify themselves overnight if they want to, uh, and also take certain other uh, provisions. But the key to a lot of these, Matt, is optionality. There are people that don't like some of these, so if you don't like them, opt out of them or uh, just don't take advantage of them. You don't have to amend your charter if you don't want to to eliminate appraisal rights. You don't have to put in your charter from the beginning um, uh, that provision. Uh, you can uh, opt out of uh, Subtitle 8 if you want. We don't think it's a good idea because uh, we think there may be a time when you want it, but if you uh, object to it, uh, uh, don't do it. If you, if you don't want to reverse split your sock, then don't do it. But there's nothing wrong with um, other uh, companies, uh, including REITs, having that power. So we think that uh, we've got a lot of uh, provisions that are unique to Maryland uh, and that are good for REITs, uh, but if um, a, a REIT or a board uh, doesn't want to do them, they've got the option of either not doing them or opting out. Jim, thank you so much for joining us. Good to be with you. For more information on this and other REIT news and analysis, be sure to visit NARIT's website, REIT.com.